So, say so it's looking that, so it's what you're doing at the moment for earning your living is supporting who you are. Mm. But the work is not important in itself. After mid 50s, it's like because you're so young, it's not clear what he's doing next. Hands set between, I've witnessed this, hands set around the age of 27. Let me just look at relationship lines here. Well, it does look as if, it looks as if you've got three major relationships in your life, but imagine you've already had one. It looks to me around about the age of 22, 23. Yeah. And then there's another one which could actually be ongoing now. Um, right, so definitely right-handed. Yeah. Okay. And, um, I need to look at your left hand too. Now you're, interestingly, your left hand is much more, might say, normal than your right hand. Usually, with right-handed people, their right, their left hand is a mess, and their right hand shows that out of chaos you've made sense. And some poor people do it the other way around, like, out of good life they've made chaos and of course left-handed people the other way around their left hand would look better but in your case you've got a good left hand it does not look chaotic mm -hmm. but your right hand looks it's very interesting your right hand um as in it's very different um and what is showing here is that you're going to become much much more spiritually inclined when you get older and that is showing in both hands. The main difference is in your left hand, it would have happened to 35. This, ha this hand, um, it's sort of happening around about 30. Okay. But it doesn't really multiply until, it doesn't, it doesn't do it a lot, shall we say, till you get to 35. Um, now, um, do you feel at all restricted at the moment? Is something, because it looks to me as if there's something maybe restricting you. Do you feel that you can't do all the things you want to do because you haven't got enough time or... Yes, Or yeah. people are holding you back or... I think definitely time and energy. Right, because it looks as if the first part... Now, it's not affecting your working life mm -hmm. and it's not affecting your personal life much. It might have done in your early 20s, but... It looks that between now and 35, that gives you another 10 years, in actual fact, if you're 25 now, or in actual fact, it's looking more like 36. But it looks as if you are, on one level, you're not able to do what you want to do. Mm -hmm. You feel restricted, but you feel restricted with ideas, mm -hmm. with more the mental stuff, the emotional stuff. It's not affecting your working life, so you're not gone mad, otherwise it would affect your working life, you wouldn't be doing any. Um, but it, but... But after 36, it's like, in a way, it's like you, on a sort of more inner level, your life is taking a totally different turn at 30. Okay. You won't be aware of that, really, till about 35. Mm. Uh, or at least, I think you might be aware of about 33, actually. But after that, it's like it shows you becoming much, much more creative with time. Mm. Um, the old, and not just creative, being much more interested in the spiritual as well. Um, and your career looks pretty well self-made. Now, that may not be what you're doing at present in the admin, but it may be what's related to the filming stuff. Mm. Um, so, it shows you as being a very generous person, perhaps more so today than you... It looks as if you're happier than you were in the past. But you see, had you followed your left hand, which you're not going to do, but had you done it, you would have had a fairly good career. Okay. I don't think you would have done the filming stuff. Well, you might have done when you were 70, but not earlier. Mm. Um, but it looks as if you would have been doing a sort of fairly business thing, that you would have had um, a changing job around about 35, um, and you would have probably retired early around about, well, actually, it wouldn't have been early from my day, but it would be for yours about the age of 60. Okay. But, um, but you're... What this hand is showing is, yes, you'll probably will continue with, not necessarily your present admin job, it may be another admin job, but you'll be, um, you may well continue in something in that line. You could continue till about 35. 
Um, it's something to do with satisfying public or satisfying public demand. It's creative. Um, and really, I mean, maybe it's as early as 35, actually. It comes in, but it doesn't take off to the late 30s. So this is what I'm feeling, that where, I, where it ties in with the clairvoyance is, and mm -hmm. like the next 10 years, yes, you'll be going places when you can maybe... You know, you end one job and have a six month holiday in Peru and then take another job type of thing. Probably not six months, three months or whatever. But you've got a basic salary coming in to fund the things you want to do and you're networking. Wherever you go, you network. However hopeless you think the situation is, stuck up a hill, you know, in Iceland, you meet somebody, you never know when you might need them again. You, you, mm. you take their details. <laughs> okay. And then, later... When you see exactly what you're needing to do, or mm. maybe you've started it already, but now it starts to fly, you've got everything in place. You know people all over the world. Mm -hmm. um, you've filmed people all over the world. You've got all these connections. And there's no one to... It's like you don't have any competition for that job. Because nobody like... You... There may be lots of people who could do it, but they would have to build up a connection list. Mm -hmm. And you've already got it. And the thing also with connection lists is to remember to write to them occasionally, past postcard technique, postcard. Um, or um, send them any, something, is mm. like send them a Christmas card, mm. something to keep up with them. Because mm. also then, and let them know your address, so if they move, they might let you know. Mm. Um, and um, sometimes you just write a few lines to someone, thinking of you the other day, just wondered how you were. And they think, oh, isn't that sweet of her? Um, and you somehow become a friend on some mm. level, person you tell when you move. Mm. Um, so, say so it's looking that, so it's what you're doing at the moment for earning your living is supporting who you are. Mm. But the work is not important in itself. So, just makes, provided you've got enough money coming in yeah. to, to um, do the things you want. But I don't think that will go... Be it doesn't need to go beyond 35. Okay. If you wanted it to go beyond 35, yeah, but it wouldn't, it, you wouldn't be happy at it. I wouldn't recommend it. It's saying, yeah, it could go up until about 45, but it's got no energy after 35. Might as well drop it. Okay. And there is this new energy coming in at 35, 34. You might, you know, just have a period off between 35 and, say, 38, 39. Well, you can maybe go off somewhere for three years, or you might just have a rest. <laughs> the thing is, I find that when you leave a job mm. that you've been doing for a while, you don't get to the other side of it until you've had six months. It's like if you go away for a year, your holiday starts when you get into the seventh month. Okay. Because you've still got the energy of what you've left behind around. Mm. Um, so, um, and yes, it's like... This new energy coming in, you can do incredible. Um, it looks a lot of success, but success and happiness between late 30s and mid 50s. Um, it's so about 15, 16, 17 years stint. And then after mid 50s, it's like because you're so young, it's not clear what he's doing next. Hands set between, I've witnessed this, hands set around the age of 27. People's lines on people's hands change quite, not on everybody, there's always exceptions to the rule, but on mm. most people it's 27 to 29 is when they set. Mm -hmm. Now you sometimes meet an 80 year old whose hand lines have never set, and you sometimes meet a 5 year old who's got firm lines that never, well you wouldn't know then, but you will know later, will never change. Yeah. But most people, so it's like it's not certain it's like, yes, it may continue after 56, or we may do something else after 56, but everything looks good. There are shadow lines here, but there's quite a few of them. And I'm, as you're now, I'm not going to tell you about 30 years ahead. I'd like to get it wrong, which is not, it's not set yet in your hand, but um, it does show that anything that you do of a creative nature, you're highly successful at. Oh, okay. And then there's something else here that starts in mid-40s, um, that I can see more of a future in, when it's showing me, it's showing me up to about the age of 70. Wait a minute. Yeah, about 69. Um, so, um, some is creative again. Um, uh, 
that may be, um, yeah, I don't know exactly what it is. I was going to say it could be teaching, but I mean teaching what you know. I don't mean going teaching children or even university students. Mm. Um, now, this creative bit I spoke about earlier that comes in maybe about 30, 35, it's, yes, it's creative, but it's also, um, you are ambition-driven, but in a nice way. Some people are ambition-driven in a nasty way. And they become absolute bastards in the process. Um, but it's like having, I feel that you'll be profit-driven, but profit, not money profit, necessarily. Okay. But um, that it's more like ambition driven, not profit driven. Mm -hmm. That you can see how you can help, and you will do what you can do to help. Mm. And um, and I think you can do very well. It's like the main thing: believe in yourself. Never let anybody knock you. Um, you no, know, you have to learn good answers for people to knock you. Mm. And I found, I found the best one so far is, thank you for your wonderful trips with yourself. I mean, when people are rude to you, there's another answer my niece has discovered, which is to say, just interested. Are you rude to everybody? Or have you particularly picked up on me? <laughs> um, and then there was something else I learned somewhere else that was, um, yes, that some people who have... Um, you know, like you may be blind or something that shows that's wrong with you. Mm -hmm. And somebody makes a comment in public. Mm. And the, someone says, well, the answer is that God made us all with something slightly wrong with us. In mm. my case, he gave me a hear, ear, eye problem. I see in your case, he gave you bad manners. <laughs> so, there Fair are, enough. <laughs> so there are, um, I mean, when someone's been... But, it's just to know there are certain things you can say to people that stop them in their tracks. Yeah. The thing is, I found in life, you need to never let somebody take power from you. Don't, on the whole, when you get better at it, I find never be rude back. Mm. But learn how to say things so that they're not rude. But stand up for yourself and never accept it. Mm. I mean, I've said things like, um, once I was, it was in my book actually, it was a family party. One of my, 25 people sitting down for Easter lunch. One of them, one of my relatives' other halves, said something very rude, said, it wasn't what they said, it was the tone of voice it was said in. Scathing voices, if I was pathetic. And I just said, would you mind repeating that? And of course she didn't, and I said, again, please repeat that. Then her husband was sitting next to her, asked her to repeat it. It wasn't long before the whole table were asking her to repeat it, all 25 of them. <laughs> At which point she finally mumbled she couldn't remember what she said. Mm. But the entire table learned that if they said something to me I didn't like, I was willing to confront in public. Mm. Nobody in my entire family ever knocked me again. Mm. So it's like, um, no, I might as well pass on a bit of the wisdom I've learned over oh, the years. Thank you. Um, Right, now when you feel restricted, or you may, it may not have hit yet, but mm. as you're going up to 35, um, if you feel that you are not quite the same as everybody else, or that, you know, you feel depressed some of the time, or whatever, or you feel out, like an outsider, mm. the thing is, remember the ugly duckling story. It wasn't a duck, mm. it was um, a swan. Mm. So it's like, if you feel different, to, yeah, of course you're different to everybody else. You're one of a few. Mm. I say you're a goat. Most people are sheep. Sheep need leaders. Sheep need to be led. Sheep need to be with the herd. Mm. Goats do their own bloody thing. <laughs> and they, goats don't even keep with each other. They all do their own thing. So you're just saying, yeah, I'm a goat, not a sheep. Um, and you're doing your own thing. Mm -hmm. um, and with time you meet other goats but they won't be unlike the sheep that all have a lot in common you may have very little in common with the other goat other than the fact that you're both goats <laughs> um, and that's fine because mm -hmm. you will both recognise that, like the godhead in each other or, mm. or the god spirit in each other um, so it's like if you feel out of it yep, maybe you're mixing with a herd of sheep and you're a goat or you're mixing with the ducks and you're a swarm.
-hmm. So just bear that in mind. And if you feel depressed, chocolate helps. <laughs> um, I found it's supposed to be a lack of mag like magnesium, they say. Well, they say that if you're lacking magnesium and the, 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 the one thing that magnesium is in most is chocolate. Uh -huh. Although I found if you take magnesium, you can still want chocolate. <laughs> it doesn't get rid of that <laughs> desire. But it's just to know that one of the best ingredients for depression is chocolate. chocolate. <laughs> Even poor quality chocolate. I once got depressed in the Himalayas. I was on holiday in the Himalayas with enough money to buy things I needed in a decent hotel. Not, not a rich hotel, but mm. a decent hotel. And I was depressed. Mm. And I knew I needed chocolate. <laughs> and of course, it's difficult to get good chocolate in it. I went into a sort of shed that sold chocolate and I tasted 24 bars. They were only something like one, two p each. 24 bars, one after the other, with the shopkeeper saying he's going to have to buy all the other. That's okay, it's fine, fine. So I tasted 20, something like 24, might be 22 bars, to see which ones tasted the nicest. <laughs> they were all different shades of revolting. By the time I'd gone through all 24, I then bought another 48 bars of the one I, ones I preferred. Mm. I found that before we'd even started on the 25th bar, I mean, I've only had a back bite off all the other 24s, yeah, yeah, yeah. I hadn't eaten the whole thing. Yeah, no, before I had my next bite, I realised I was no longer suffering from depression. And this was really cheap quality chocolate mm. with lots of cheap, lots of milk and sugar and nasties in it. Yeah. And it still made me feel all right. Yeah. But they will tell you you're better off on sort of 85% oh, cocoa, yeah. which is yeah. revolting. Well, mm -hmm. not as revolting as 100%, that is really revolting. Very strong. I find 70% most people can just about handle. Mm. Um, but it's like, if at times it's, I don't mean chronic doctor's type depression, I mean feeling low. Yeah. Mm. Um, yes, I mean, there is a stage when you do need a doctor and that's, the, that's a disease. Mm. But when you're just feeling, oh, I feel depression, you know, the way one occasionally yeah. does. Um, but so it's like, You've got a life out there and you can live a good life. Now, I need to get on with, um, let me just look at relationship lines here. Well, it does look as if, it looks as if you've got three major relationships in your life. But imagine you've already had one. It looks to me around about the age of 22, 23. Yeah. And then there's another one which could actually be ongoing now. Have you got a relationship at the moment? It's a bit iffy. Oh, uh, yeah, it's okay. okay. It's okay. Well, it might get a bit iffy. Um, I wouldn't particularly recommend you married him, but there's one coming late, I would say late 30s, and that might be why you have a little rest between 35 and 39 working, because you might be having babies. Uh, okay. But um, it, it looks like there's a relationship right about the age of 39, and that looks to me as if that is the relationship of your life. Shortly after it started, there will be like a breakup. Or a separation. Now, whether or not this is because you've had a row, or because you have, um, he's he's gone somewhere else to live for two years with a job, or you have, or something, I don't know. But it looks like it could be a breakup, or even a double breakup, like over a two-year period. But hang on, visit whatever this is a relationship meant to last. Okay. If it's a row, well, sometimes people have to relationships just need to start again. Mm. because you've learnt what it is you did that was wrong. Mm. Hopefully he's learnt what he did that was wrong. And um, then you start again with a little bit more caring. So, um, they say this, as for children, I'm not seeing... I can see one. Um, in actual fact, I can't see it that clearly. This can be a combination of my eyesight and the fact, because you're below the age of 27, it hasn't yet set. But looking at this, I think if you wanted to have four kids, you could. Okay. Um, and, but I think you will have at least one, and I think you need to have a discussion with hubby about how many you might, might actually have. But, cause, um, but, and of course, once you've got a second income coming in, you can also give up your job and do everything you love. Yeah. Um, so, it's like, what it's saying is not definitely four children, you could have four children. Mm. It's like hasn't decided yet. Mm, okay. I mean, because of your youth. Mm. And also the lines are 
not strong enough to be definite. Okay. So if you just turn your hand around, because I haven't said anything about your life, your career line I've spoken about, but well, um, at least I'm seeing it now and I've lost it earlier. Um, <clears throat> yes, I mean, you were doing, you will probably work to the day you die. Okay. Um, you will probably be enjoying what you're doing. Um, and, um, yup, I mean, if anything, it gets better when you get older. And you may, in the end, have a business side of your life and a creative side of your life. Now, not like at the moment, admin and filming. Mm. It could mean one job is like if you are an artist, you paint pictures and you sell them. Yeah. So there's two jobs within the same job. Okay. You have to sell them, otherwise your house isn't big enough to store them. <laughs> you know, you don't want to dump them quite. So, um, it looks, but it does say that, you know, when you get older, you'll be all right money-wise. That's good. Um, Happiness-wise. Um, and, yes, and it's this, there's also something, apart from the thing that starts about 38, 39, it's like, this could be the filming, actually, bit here, because it's showing that it goes quite nicely up to 26, and you might have a little holiday. And then it does, it does quite well all of your life, but it's never going to be the major thing. Okay. But it may be related to things. Mm -hmm. It's like if you're networking with things and helping people move things from A to B, and whatever, it's something that reminds me of that somebody found that when you finish picking coffee... There's lots of coffee plants, and usually they pay someone to take them away and burn them or whatever. But they then found they fed some type of creature somewhere, but the other side of the world. Mm -hmm. And so people learn how to transport rather than destroy. Mm -hmm. the co I can't remember quite where it was, but I mean, it, which countries were involved, but it was like the whole thing was that. Somebody who got free fertiliser, they just need to pay transfer costs. Yeah. And somebody else never, no longer had to pay someone to burn their stuff or to just cart it away. Yeah. And it's like when you see how to put people that do things in touch with each other like to win. deal with their things, it's then the coffee could be a lot cheaper because yeah. you didn't get a little coffee in the bush you had to get rid of. Mm. Because apparently they, had to keep, they couldn't keep the same bushes going for more than whatever length of time. Mm. Um... And it, it was brilliant. But it was like being able to make the connections and connecting the people so they could do it. There'd be a transport costs. Yeah. Particularly if it'd go from Iceland to yeah. Turkey type thing. But, um, <laughs> but it was a lot cheaper than paying someone to get rid of. And of course you were then using the Earth's resources. Mm. And I feel there may be things like that in the future. Okay. Maybe to do with people. You know, people stuck somewhere that want to go somewhere else. I feel that we may not have sort of barriers as in visas and passports, maybe more the physicality of getting someone from A to B. Okay. Or knowing, you know, where to go. Mm. But I don't know, because it's like the, the new world that's emerging, there's so much that's unknown about it. Mm. Other than the fact it's going to be a world of love and caring, and no Good. war and peace. And people are going to need things as they build the new structures. And it's like, just go for it. Go for what you want. Okay. Because I think you can make certain that you're happy. And that's the most important bit. Now, I think I've finished with the hand bit.